you know, one of the things I wanted to do is give Mario some kind of weapon. You know, I, I just think that makes sense. I'm post about to lift. Oh, this is getting into the blue. <laughs> one of the things I wanted to do is give Mario some kind of weapon, some kind of gun. And uh, there's there's a lot to choose from. Uh, that one. Uh, nah, that. Nah. Eh, kinda. That doesn't look bad, but. Eh, mm. Hmm. That looks almost perfect. I wonder. Oh, hell yeah. And you can make one special modification with just one finger. I've actually done uh, modifications to the fingers of figures uh, with the McFarlane Master Chief from Halo 4 slash 5. I actually modified his uh, index finger to actually hold his gun a lot better. So, yeah. So, piece of you know, Orion SRT to 64 history. Alright, get on with it. That is awesome. That is one hell of a pre-manufactured part. Hell yes. Now I have Mario with a gun. Alright Bowser, time to surrender. Alright, after about 40-ish minutes of cutting and gluing, this is the end result. And I really think this came up pretty good. I like the fact that nothing is straight, nothing is really... And it's all angled at different angles. I like the fact that one of them just kind of stuck out and kind of crossed with another one. I mean, it really, this really does like post apocalyptic. <laughs> post apocalyptic. There we go. I, can, I swear I'm the. I swear I'm a grown adult that could pronounce stuff correctly. But uh, I actually like how that came out. And uh, what I'm thinking about doing is going and painting this separately, uh, masking the end of it. Uh, right here with some tape and then masking the other thing I really want to mask is this front part here because I think that came out really good it's minimalistic but it came out really good and all it was just a little bit of sandpaper or a little bit of the sand sticks I just had at it and uh, one of the reasons why I haven't been filming as much as my phone died on me so what I'm thinking now is I want to add a gun I want to add this pair of guns like right here and uh see if I can't do that. I kind of want to drill into it just so I can like take it out so I don't uh, screw up the figure so I can keep the figure out and put it in so see if I can't find something to drill that out. I'm also going to cut the uh, that little uh, crosshairs off because I really don't need them and uh, one of the other things I want to do is I want to cut off one of the engines. I think I'm cutting off, I think I'm cut off that engine and uh, then kind of kit bash my own engine with some uh, some parts so uh yeah so far so good i will admit one of the wheels is a little crooked uh but i think it, overall it's coming out pretty darn good so yeah and then for the paint uh, i don't know exactly what i'm gonna do for paint at the moment uh, i'll probably go with when i think mad max i think the sand i think desert i think kind of a tan i think brown i think dark brown i think like silver so i'm gonna have to get a little creative with some of the paint and on the back I have a couple ideas this right here is a missile launcher that I kind of hooked into it's supposed to be uh, uh, excuse me some uh, gears or some uh, a handlebar of some kind so I'll see if this can't kind of looks like some kind of like weapons container or fuel container and I've got a couple ideas for some other stuff so now I've got some chunks of plastic, and so far I've only gone through one tube of glue. So uh, hopefully I don't go through another. I also got some claws over here that I could use. I've got some little itty bitty missiles right there. I've got all kinds of stuff. I've got some more weapons and stuff. So plenty, plenty of stuff. Not enough time. Ain't that the pain in the arse? So off I go. So I cut off the engine and after lots of glue and lots of probably unnecessary pieces I think I didn't really need to put all four of those panels on there and uh, after a little bit of 
more glue and uh, other stuff. I did drill that little meh, that uh, a little hole where that uh, golden piece is right there, and uh, had that there. But I have an idea for a giant gun turret on top. And then I found this black piece that kind of looks like an engine, and I glued that on top, and I thought it looked cool. Then over here on the back, we got some kind of boost engine with some kind of like machine gun bullets in there. Then I have a supply package being held by a little crane that probably needs a little bit more glue. That's okay. Not gonna lie, everything on my work table is starting to look like uh, a toy massacre and a cocaine binge. <laughs> and then over here on the front I have a little hood ornament and all the different spikes going in all different ways which I think came out pretty good. So uh, I definitely need to dust this off and then I want to cover this part up with some tape and then I'm going to take some paint and I'm going to paint this silver and then go in with a little bit of red kind of give it a Mario kind of a look <laughs> so I mean imagine having that coming toward just having that coming towards you it looked pretty kind of pretty creepy so for the turret I also want to have two uh, I also want to put some mini guns I think I'll put them right there and right there so that might be kind of cool and uh, anyways, I also wanted to have this turret on tap, but I also wanted the turret to rotate. So I was trying to drill out a hole on both sides and have some kind of metal, some kind of peg to go in between. And uh, I was trying to cut it off from the axle of the Dollar Tree car. And that didn't really work, but my dad reminded me of something. I got some magnets. So I borrowed two magnets. I mean, I <clears throat> yeah, borrowed. So I got them sitting right here. So I'm going to glue one in over here, and I have this piece of paper in between so I don't get glue everywhere. I'm going to glue the other magnet in there so I have it rotating so it can rotate. And if I ever need to, I can just take it off, put the Mario figure in, and then put it back on. So, yeah, a little bit of rotation association. So, yeah. But uh, so far, this has been a very relaxing, very fun project. And uh, Chris Rock said something really funny about jobs versus careers. And in his uh, stand-up routine, he uh, he said, you know, uh, if you have a career, there's not enough time. And uh, I'm starting to understand that a little bit more now. And it's kind of funny because right after that, he said, if you have a job, there's too much time. And I'm not going to lie. Sometimes at work, I feel that way. <laughs> and it's like, All right, I'm going to wait. You know, I'm, Two hours have passed and I'll check the clock. Damn, 15 minutes. But that's all right. So one of the other things I'd like to do is definitely, like I said earlier, I want to mask this area with some blue tape and I'll probably mask up some other areas with some blue tape. And uh, I really like how that came out. It was really simple. Really, really simple. And it just came out so good. And uh, yeah. So time to get to gluing some magnets in and then probably start breaking out some primer and some paint and uh, start having fun. Yeah. Never enough time. I think that is the lesson I have learned today. And that kit bashing, as fun as it is, it does take some time. But that's alright. It's alright. Although now it's starting to get close to 8. I should, eight, I should probably eat something. And then there we go. So I'm going to tape this up and I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to paint it silver. So I'm tape up most of the red, definitely the front. And uh, I got the uh, front section outside painting or drying. I just painted it black and then I hit it with some silver. And uh, yeah, so I gotta cover up the wheels. I cover up the front and then I'm gonna paint that. Then I have that magnet right there. And I got a rod right there so it covers up the top of the magnet. And I'm just gonna spray. So. And then as I'm letting that dry, I'm gonna take all of this and put it away. And uh, I'm starting to get kind of hungry. And, uh, you know, the mini guns, that'd be kind of neat, but I think I'm going to pass on that. Because I think that one turret's plenty. And, uh, I got Mario's rocking a giant machine gun and an axe. I was trying to make a double barrel shotgun, but, uh, it didn't turn out very good, so I think I'll just use a pre made double barrel shotgun. But, you know, this is Mario, so I, I think the axe and the machine gun are probably plenty. <laughs> but, uh, anyways. Kind of a mess, but that's alright. Not gonna lie with the antenna right there, it kinda looks like you're in a 
safe driving mode in Mario Kart 8. Anyways. So here we are, the next morning, and uh, last night I uh, painted everything, obviously, and uh, I really don't think my phone camera does this justice, I actually think this came out really nice. I like the the fact that it looks like it's welded, you know, like, ta like really badly welded, <laughs> yeah, rush, well done. I didn't really have enough paint to go on the back, but, you know, I think that just kind of adds, the, the paint really adds to it, you know, it looks kind of like this wasteland, kit bash, throw together, kind of a thing. I like how the paint on the back of this came out. Yeah, there's, yeah. So, I kind of... I kind of should have added this part last so it could stay black and that could have stayed green, but oh well. Just add a little bit more color to it, I guess. But overall, I think it came out pretty good. So, uh, let's get some tape off and uh, I, I will admit there are a couple other things I want to do. I've got some stuff over here. But uh, let's get this tape off and uh, let's go from there. You know, I was thinking, I kind of want to add just something else to the front, and I kind of like that. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to damage the plastic, and then I'm going to take a little bit of black or uh, silver paint, depending on how much I have left, and paint that up. And then just kind of glue it right there. So, see how that comes out. That might look really nice. Just to, just to add a little bit of something. Maybe not. I'll think about it. Yeah. So, now that I have all the tape off, and you know, I really like how it came out. My little complaint is I kind of forgot all about the wheels. So now I gotta go in and uh, see if I can't paint those. And, uh, so besides that, this is pretty much what it's gonna look like. Kinda like that. And, uh, you know, I, I am kinda thinking about putting that right there. Just to add a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, go paint this and paint the wheels. And I'll glue this in place, and then, uh, oh yeah, I'm also about, almost forgot about something. There we go. Oh yeah, it's coming together. I only have a good place to put the axe right there. Yeah, oh yeah, something like that. Yeah, that look cool. Yeah. One of the things I've been struggling with is trying to give Mario some, like, Mad Max armor. You know, I... Because there's no visor, you know, on over the car. I was trying to think, what can I do? But I don't want to really glue anything. I really don't want to ruin the figure. So, uh, I don't really have any blue tech or putty. But, uh, if I was going to... You know, you could use these for the hands. You know, and actually, those are sitting there without glue. Now that chest piece you could glue in. Oh, actually kind of stuck in there. That's actually kind of, that, that's not glued or anything. That's cool. You use these for like shoulder plates. You know, and then I was kind of inspired by Buzz Lightyear. May I break out some wings? But, uh, that, this, I really like this little visor thing. Kind of looks like, uh, some kind of visor. I like it. But I just, I don't know. I, I think it's too sci-fi. We, we need to be heading towards, like, steampunk Mad Max chaos thing, so. Yeah. I'm tempted to put these on the hands. You know, it's like, kind of metal, super metal, like, brass knuckles, but, nah, I, I really don't want to, really don't want to ruin this figure. These are really nice little Mario figures, and I really just, I don't want to ruin one. 
If I had another figure, I probably would. But I just, I, I really don't want to ruin this. I love you, Mario. One of the things I totally forgot about was model kits. This is a little model kit that I have that I probably never put together. I didn't even think that I could have just used some of these right there. Give some more, uh, give it some more definition. Yeah, because let's be honest, yeah, I'm probably, I'm probably not gonna finish that. It's a cool card, but I'm probably not gonna finish it. Well, uh, cut this piece off as part of the sprue. I thought, what if I could turn this into some little exhausts like Lightning McQueen? Uh, on the side, right there. Right there. Only problem is, I think I'll be here forever, and time is limited. So, I think what I'm going to do, is uh, see if I can't remove that and this, and then put these two on there. Yeah. In today's video, we will be taking this Mario Kart and going from this to this. So here they are, side by side, and I can honestly say this was a lot of fun. I really like how the spikes came out. I do kind of wish I angled some of these a little bit higher so it could run on a slightly smoother surface, but you know, I could always... I could always go in and cut them, I mean, let's be honest here, this is probably just going to sit on a shelf for most of its life. There's all the bits and details and engine pieces and stuff. I mean, there's a billion things that I would have liked to do or liked to add. I, I wanted to add a joystick somewhere around here. I, I was thinking about adding some mini guns right there, but, you know, eventually... And you gotta finish whatever it is. You gotta just finish it and kind of move on to the next one. And I, I think that's a lesson George Lucas should have taken into consideration when making uh, the Star Wars uh, special editions. Enough said. So yeah, it was a fun project, and uh, I think it came out pretty good. I, I like the axe right there, calling back to the uh, original Mario game where you knock down axe and defeat Bowser. You know, you got the hood ornament right there, you got some guns, you got Mario rocking a giant <laughs> gun of some kind. And uh, I would have liked to do something Mad Max inspired with Mario, maybe give him a claw hand. But I just said, nah, I, I really don't want to ruin that Mario figure. They're really good figures. And uh, one last thing, with the original toy, you know, you, you pull it back and, you know... <laughs> you pull it back and... Uh, <laughs> So the neat thing about this toy is you can you, know, you can pull it back and it goes on its own. Oh frick, I had that paused. Gosh damn. And now with this Mario Kart, and you have to be really careful with it. But it still works. <laughs> neat. I also like the fact that it's a lot higher in elevation. But uh yeah. Neat. Through this whole part project, I've done my best to not get a ton of glue over myself, and I just got glue on me. Gosh dang it. Let's -a go. And the turret moves. You know, I, I guess I wouldn't really move that much in combat, but I like the fact that it's a magnet so I can just take it off and safely get the Mario figure in and then take it off and put it back on. Actually, I think it looks a little bit better without the giant machine gun in his hand. So. Overall, I'm very happy with this project. You know, this is a simple project. It's nice to do these simple projects. 
you know, even like my Bowser right there, you know, it's nice to kind of sit back, take some time, do something simple, and have fun. And uh, for, I don't know, I probably spent 30 bucks in total, There's like 15 for the cart, I think 10, to, 10 bucks on some more spray paint, and the rest of the stuff I got, I literally got at the Dollar Tree, and I had the tools lying around. And, you know, once you get the tools, you know, these tools will last you forever. So, you know, it's a fairly simple project. It was really fun to put together. And, uh, you know, I think the craft man said something really awesome near the end of his video. Just imagine how much better yours is going to be. So I highly recommend going out, finding something, buying another one, and see what you can do and kind of kit bash and do your own kind of post-apocalyptic you know, Mad Max, you know, badass death mobile. So, anyways, Mario's gotta go rescue Peach. So, let's -a go. And like always, guys, this is Ryan SRT2, 64 Sound My Amigos. Peace! And have a good day. And finish the fight. Also, and just for fun, I have the other Mario Kart toys. So you can kind of get a size, a sense of scale comparatively. So, yeah, it definitely makes Toad's vehicle look really small in comparison. So, there's the, yeah, the Mario Kart. So, yeah, pretty good sized. I think this Mario Kart line of toys is actually pretty cool. I do kind of hope they add in a couple more characters. It'd be nice to get that little Koopa cart that Mario was using in the film as well. Um, it'd be cool to... It'd be awesome to get a little uh, Luigi figure in this scale. It'd also be nice to get a blue shell Koopa, or maybe a red shell Koopa. That'd be kind of neat. Uh, but besides that, I really like the Peach figure. It's got a lot of articulation. It's really well detailed. And, uh, yeah, it's a really nice figure. So... Yeah. What do you guys think? You think I should do some Mad Max vehicles on Toad and Peach? What do you guys think? So, not too long ago. <clears throat> so, recently I bought another Mario so recently I did a custom Mad Max Mario Kart and if you haven't seen the video where I make it and paint it and stuff it'll be in the description section down below but that was a lot of fun I had a lot of fun building it and I thought oh it'd be really neat if I did something similar so this guy right here, but instead of making a Mad Max vehicle, what if I take what I learned and try making the Blue Shell Koopa Troopa Ultimate Vehicle. So I've got some parts right here, and I have the bag of spare parts from last time, and I've got my tools all ready to go. So let's see what we can do with this little motorcycle green Koopa. So the toy is a pullback one, just like the Mario Kart where you pull it back, it goes forward and it goes after Mario. Now I actually do have two of these and I picked one up recently. So we're going to be customizing this guy right here. And uh, just kind of having fun with it. And uh, unlike the Mario figure, I have no real concern to uh, just kind of have fun and paint over the figure itself. Uh, it's not exactly the most posable thing in the world, and uh, the hands don't really rotate, they're really built to be in that cart design, but, uh, so what I'm gonna do with this, I'm actually gonna save this part for last, cause I need some wings, and some horn, or some spikes, and, uh, just need to paint it blue, and that will be, hopefully, a fairly simple process, and so that will be relatively easy. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna reuse this cart. I probably will for the seat. I'll probably just kind of sandwich this in between things. I th think I can take it apart, maybe? So we'll kind of see what we're going to do with that. So on screen right now is going to be some of the best images I could get of the vehicle itself. So obviously you have two giant doors on the front that crush, and then it's kind of got this 
pretty big body and it's got about six wheels and there's spikes and stuff all over it so and then you have the two giant cannons on top so i went to the dollar tree directly after buying a new cart and i picked up as much stuff as i could find that kind of resembled what i was kind of going after so that could be used for the giant spikes right there i was thinking we could use the fire truck more or less kind of to give it some more size i don't want it to be super big but but this would probably be good you know it's a good size i could probably take the ladder off and uh yeah and whatever you do don't hit that little button because it makes an ear piercing noise so you gotta go in there and i'll take out those batteries and then for the top, I found this really awesome Final Faction uh, X4 turret. I actually can shoot projectiles, and I really love the Final Faction stuff. Really cool action figures, and I've got oh, I've got a bunch of these things. They're really cool. I do I kind of do wish this was really detailed and painted, so I don't really have any issues taking it apart. I mean, look how cool it looks on the box, and it's just kind of gray. But I do like the spring missile uh, missiles, so you know I, you kind of get what you get. So I'm gonna start taking some of this apart and uh, kind of cross-reference with an image I'm gonna kind of have off screen, and uh, just start by tearing stuff apart. <laughs> my gear wants to work with me. Alright, so I got all the screws out, so let's see how... Oh, that's not very hard to take apart. And uh, since I really don't have any desire to listen to that god-awful screeching again... Oh, no, not bad. <laughs> Ryan, we don't know what you're pointing at, fair enough. Alright, so let's... Now that I got this apart, we can kind of see how it works. How hard is the rest of it to take apart? So the wires are okay. <laughs> that wasn't exactly the plan, but that worked. There we go. I actually really like this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I really like it. So now that I got kind of a frame going on. So take the wires off of this. Hopefully I can just take it out with dis without destroying, because I wouldn't mind holding on to the light for something. I mean, cut the wires towards the speaker so I don't have to listen to that ever again. Hmm. So, I got that out of the way. Now the real question is, how hard are these going to be to take apart? No idea. Well, I'm going to use my brain. I know I, I don't use it much. It looks like there's a tab right there. And it looks like if I drill that through, I could take this bottom half apart. Because I'm planning on actually having it open and closed. So as long as I can hold on to this kind of front chassis part here and uh, that'll be hopefully a piece of cake this over here uh, I'll probably do the same thing looks like there's a couple tabs on and try cutting out and uh, but I'm also kind of thinking if I just cut with my snips over here or maybe a knife I could probably just cut it off right there and right over here and I won't have to even think about having to tear the rest of it apart. So that'll be nice. Because I think this will be nice to use maybe towards the end of the vehicle. Or something. This right here is the most complex thing to take apart of all time.
place of madness, too. All living things contain a measure of madness that moves them into answers. Ain't no doubt that P-Dog gets shit on in the novel and has trouble coming to terms with all his suffering. So on one hand, I realize that the mess he go through up on that wrath don't mean a damn thing to the universe. But on the other hand, to him, there ain't nothing more important. Cause it's all he knows. In a cold, dark universe, not only is your suffering relative, but truth is too, all throughout this book, we get muddied representations of what's real. I mean, who is this fool called to believe that Richard Parker is just the savage killer be killed side of Pop? These the subtle ways that little thug and Richie P associated with each other. Since we're on the subject, I became as constipated as Richard Parker. I began to imitate Richard Parker and sleep in sleeping an incredible number of hours. Well, who the hell knows? I guess the realest truth is there ain't no way to tell what really went down with that rap. Hell, both of the stories pile on us for the real deal. Maybe the best thing is just going with what's going to help you cope and give you hope. Know what I mean? Hey, thanks for watching, my well-read ballers. Peace. Yo, thanks for watching, guys. Don't go anywhere, because if you like pie and I mean the P.I., all sorts of stuff. Crunch wrap sliders, zesty citrus wings, bacon on a stick, and so, so much more. Click right here on the link in the description to be taken to his channel. Make sure to tell him why Scrap sent you, and be sure to subscribe while you're there. And ask him when he's coming for some Korean barbecue and to kick it with the Wisecrack crew. And one more thing, everyone. We got our original design Bugnos tanks and women's tees on clearance. Now more than 30% off. So head over to the Bugnos store and get them now. Because once they're gone, they're gone. The link to the store is right here, and you'll find it below in the description, too. All right, that's it for now. Peace, guys. So after a couple hours of gluing and cutting and just kind of having at it, this is kind of what we have so far. So I got the basic shape, which is good. I will admit the those giant claws are actually angled at a little bit, which a little bit frustrating, but at this point I just kind of want to get this over with. So we got kind of going on so far. And uh, somewhere on the back, I do want to add this, because that's in the movie, and then got to paint this Koopa Troopa blue, and uh, something kind of like that. Now, yes, it's underscaled, but uh, when comparing it to, it does dwarf all the other vehicles in the line, so, yeah, I think it's big enough and intimidating enough. So now I'm going to go outside and just paint it black. I got my Rust-Oleum flat black primer. <laughs> 